Last week, an archaeological team from Waterloo Uncovered made an extraordinary find on the battlefield of Waterloo itself. It's a find that could rewrite the history books. I'm very pleased to say that History Hit's very own James Rogers was there as the story emerged from the ground. At sunset on the 18th of June, 1815, the guns on the fields of Waterloo fell silent. Napoleon had suffered his final defeat at the hands of Wellington, Blucher, and their allied armies. The curtain fell on the Napoleonic era, and history was made. But over 200 years later, a dedicated team of world-class archaeologists, students, and veterans from the charity Waterloo Uncovered are determined to not only read about history, but to unearth it as well. And I've been invited along too. Since 2015, Waterloo Uncovered have been coming to the Waterloo battlefield and have made some astonishing discoveries. Discoveries that have not just supported the accepted story of the battle, but have also changed it. But this year, 2022, they made a discovery that no one could have expected. A discovery that will put Waterloo Uncovered into the history books themselves. I've been doing archaeology for nigh on 25 years, and I have never seen anything like this. Possibly, you know, one of the best finds we've had because you just don't find bones at Waterloo. The Battle of Waterloo took place here, about 16 kilometers south of Brussels, just south of the village of Waterloo. In fact, Napoleon never called it Waterloo. Instead, he called it the Battle of Mont Saint-Jean, the name of a farm just north of the battlefield. And Blucher, well, he called it the Belle Alliance, after the name of an inn that he and Wellington met in after hostilities had finished. The battlefield itself was small, only a few miles wide, but despite this it was a messy affair. Some 200,000 troops from across Europe, French, British, Prussians and Dutch, were packed into this rolling landscape. The air was thick with smoke from guns, communication between positions was a nightmare, and Waterloo descended into battles within battles, like the famous struggle at Hougoumont or La Haye Sainte. As Wellington said himself, Waterloo was like a ball. Everyone would come away from it with their own, very different experience. Hundreds of traditional histories have been written about the battle, but surprisingly very little modern archaeology had taken place. And so, in 2015, a team from Waterloo Uncovered decided to get boots on the ground and start to explore the battlefield. For the next four years, they dug across the battlefield, making exciting finds like an intact French howitzer shell and several British uniform buttons, which helped retell the story of the defense of Hougoumont. Now, in 2022, and after having missed two years because of the COVID pandemic, the team were itching to get excavating again. The ground was broken on the 4th of July, 2022, with a number of sites earmarked for field work. The two most exciting are the farm at Mont Saint-Jean, where it is hoped the team can continue the work they started in 2019, and metal detectorists have got permission to work on Wellington's famous reverse slope, the site of some of the grimmest fighting during the battle. I'm going to start up at Mont Saint-Jean, the site that the Waterloo and Covered team started excavating in 2019. To find out more about the importance of the site, I spoke with one of the founders of Waterloo Uncovered, Charlie Foenet. So here we are at Mont Saint-Jean. Uh, Mont Saint-Jean is a farm that sits behind the ridge that was the Allied line during the Battle of Waterloo. And this place is interesting because it was the field hospital during the battle. Um, and it's perfectly sited because it's just far enough back not to be directly involved in most of the fighting, but it's close enough to be a covered location to which you can easily and fairly rapidly concentrate casualties. And what went on here during the battle was pretty ghastly. Um, an awful lot of amputations, hundreds of amputations, and as we know, surgery was a pretty rudimentary business in 1815. 
Um, what we've got here is the orchard of Mont Saint-Jean, um, which is a really interesting archaeological context because this has never been ploughed. It's always been pasture and or orchard, uh, which means that the archaeology sits at a relatively shallow level, undisturbed. And last time we were here, back in 2019, we did quite a lot of surveying, metal detecting, started opening trenches to see what the metal detecting sources were uh, providing us. Uh, and in this particular location, we hit upon an assemblage of metal objects that we think are some sort of ammunition container, ammunition box, not sure what, but interestingly, when we started excavating it, what we found um, was an assemblage of human legs. Um, amputated legs. Uh, I think three of them came up in 2019 um, and really very clear you had um, amputation cut marks high on the femur, um, you had um, obvious damage to the bones um, and in one case a musket ball still within the, within the, the bone assemblage. The lead archaeologist on site is Professor Tony Pollard. It wasn't just the human bone we encountered. A few metres that way we found animal bone protruding through the side of the section of the trench and it was teeth, huge teeth. We thought, right, that's either a horse or a cow. But the problem was we were running out of time. So we, we, we had specialists in, so the bones were lifted and taken to the lab in Brussels and they underwent analysis and we covered the rest of the trench over. And we thought, right, we'll come back in 2020. Little did we know that it would be hit by the pandemic. And so 2020 passes, 2021, and we're now 2022. So this is the first time we've been back since then. Within hours of that three-year hiatus being over, the Mont Saint-Jean Trench is revealing some of its secrets. And not just the teeth of a horse begin to appear, but an entire skeleton. We amassed just beneath the surface what we thought uh, at that stage they just looked like teeth and then as the days have progressed as you can see now we are developing what we think is a whole horse skeleton. So these are teeth and this is the jaw and we're coming to the four limbs here and of course this is the rib cage following the spine and we're hoping um, where Jim is to find um, hind legs. We think there are three horses, um, so there's some remnants of horse bone in um, this right hand uh, uh, part of our trench. There are some horse bones over there and uh, we've now found some horse bones in a trench over there. Exactly why these horse remains are being found next to a hospital for human casualties is still not clear. All the team can do now is continue to clean up the remains for further analysis later in the week. But before that question can be answered, even more bones start to reveal themselves. So, um, we started here three days ago, uh, and this was the only thing exposed, which we thought potentially was, we knew it was bone, but not sure, you know, maybe a sort of part of a leg or something like that. Um, started, to, started to excavate and then found what we thought was a kneecap. Um, and then initially we thought this was sort of where they, um, you know, had an amputation or something like that. But then with the knee, and then I found this sort of bone going this way. Um, and then we carried on digging, and the more and more it's coming out, it's sort of uh, what they call articulation. Um, and they, um, so we think potentially there could be uh, a full skeleton. Um, so from just that one little bit, you know, we managed to earn So yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited. I don't want to just, you know, keep cracking on, you know. After further cleanup, what we thought might be human remains are in fact more remains of a horse. The trench at Mont Saint Jean is posing more questions than it's answering at the moment, and so to better understand the site, a decision was made at the end of day three to extend the trench further to the west. It's a decision that will turn the dig upside down. Veronique Moulin, a Belgian archaeologist working for the Walloon Heritage Agency, oversaw the trench extension and was on the spot when a truly astonishing discovery was made. Hier, nous avons décidé, euh, de commun accord avec donc les membres de Waterloo Uncovered, euh, d'agrandir un petit peu donc la zone qu'on avait ouverte avec l'appel mécanique. Et justement, donc dans les 4 mètres de plus que nous avons ouvert, nous avons eu la surprise de euh, découvrir euh, des dents qui sont apparues. Et ces dents étaient bah, assez, euh, assez euh, clairement humaines. 
Donc ça veut dire qu'on n'est plus uniquement dans une zone où on va déposer des membres amputés qui peuvent être considérés finalement comme des déchets vu qu'on n'a pas vraiment un corps. Euh, mais ici, on est vraiment dans le cadre d'une inhumation également. Donc ça change vraiment la, la façon d'envisager cet ensemble euh, d'objets et d'ossements déposés ici euh, à Mont-Saint-Jean. After spending an anxious night, the team arrive on site to start the careful excavation around where the teeth were found. What they find shocks everyone. A human skull. The question now, is the rest of the skeleton intact? Here in the trench at Mont St. John, it is a hive of activity. So much is being found here that covers every aspect of the battle. If you look down the far end, you've got three horse skeletons, gigantic skeletons being found and unearthed. And then in the middle, you've got these cartridges, munitions pouches that would have been on the soldiers. But this is something that is gonna make history. It is the third ever, ever human skull to be found at the Waterloo battle site. Human remains are not just rare at Waterloo, they're almost unheard of. Only one complete skeleton has been found on the battlefield, a discovery made back in 2012. But the conservative figure putting the dead on both sides at 15,000, well, where did all the bones go? Catching up again with Tony, he suggests what might have happened to the men who fell that day. The treatment of the dead was very perfunctory. We, we have very different ideas and different attitudes towards death, pain, and, and everything that goes with it, including the disposal of the dead. And we have military cemeteries, we have this idea of hallowed ground. None of that existed in the early 19th century. They did bury them. Uh, they put pe people in pits in great numbers, but also in twos and threes. And a couple of visitors described that the, the fields and hills and the, the, the rolling landscape as though it's covered in molehills. These are all the graves of the dead. But it's not just the pits, they're actually burning the dead as well. Some of the bodies would, would have found their way into graveyards in local churches, but by and large, you know, that 15,000 dead, they are buried in pits on the battlefield or burned on the battlefield. We have no accounts in the modern era of, of grave pits being encountered. And we've been working here since 2015. We've done a lot of work around Hougamont. We've looked at geophysical anomalies. We haven't found a single grave pit, even in areas where we have paintings from the time and descriptions of the time of grave pits. There has been nothing. And I, I've, just, I've just published a paper which, which is, to my huge surprise, garnered quite a lot of interest. And I, I suggested there that stories that are being passed down about these grave pits basically being mined out in the decades after the battle and the bones collected and shipped across to the UK and ground up into bone meal and bone dust and used as a fertiliser. And we have, we have newspaper stories from the 1820s and 30s of that happening, but very little other evidence. So my, my working hypothesis, if you like, when we arrived here this week was that we're not likely to find many of these grave pits because I, my feeling is that a lot of them have been robbed out, but I needed further evidence for that. Back in the trenches, the careful work of excavating the remarkable remains is revealing more of the skeleton. The team has now also been joined by Caroline Laforet, an anthropologist from the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences in Brussels, and Caroline's expertise will help decode this new find. Donc là, le but pour euh, pour nous, ça va être de gager le dégager le plus finement possible les ossements. Bon, déjà parce qu'ils sont vraiment très mal conservés, donc c'est vraiment délicat, vous voyez que les os se, se brisent assez facilement. Et là, on a un individu, peut-être entier, donc on va pouvoir comparer si lui aussi on va trouver des blessures par balle qui auraient peut-être causé la mort de l'individu, si on a tenté de le soigner ou pas, s'il était déjà décédé, et puis aussi euh, par la disposition, l'agencement des ossements du squelette, on va pouvoir voir... Euh, S'il a été déposé avec soin en essayant de lui reconstituer une attitude, on va dire, une position respectueuse, ou si au contraire c'était plutôt un dépôt à la hâte parce qu'il y avait urgence.
I've pulled myself away from the excitement over at Mont Saint Jean to come to the centre of the Waterloo battlefield, to the famous reverse slope. And this is hallowed ground for the Waterloo Uncovered team. For one of the first times in history, they've been given permission to get their metal detectors out and to scan the area. They're finding musket balls and bits of howitzers that are showing where soldiers fought and fell. And it's strange to think, but whoever is found in that pit over at Mont Saint Jean, well, they may well have fallen right here. The reverse slope saw some bitter fighting and was also the muster spot for the British heavy cavalry ahead of their famous charge. David Olk, an archaeologist and metal detectorist, has been with the Waterloo Uncovered team since the very beginning and hopes that this new survey will reveal more detail about that crucial clash. Wellington had, um, had brought in a number of, of his reserves to this area and, and had asked them to, to basically lie down so that they could not be seen by the opposition. Um, so when the time came for them to, 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 to do their bit, clearly they would have been fired upon. Um, and as I say, we're, we're looking to recover um, anything from, from that contact. So predominantly musket balls and cannonballs. And the fines from the fields are flowing in. In addition to the coins and buttons, hundreds of musket balls, both French and Allied, are being turned up. A testament to the terrible fighting that would have taken place here. Back at Mont Saint Jean, even more horse remains are being uncovered. As every hour goes by, new theories about the trench are suggested. But a gruesome new discovery leads Tony to one particularly tragic conclusion. If you imagine that, let's say, Ney's famous cavalry charge, French charge, in the afternoon about 4pm, and that involved between maybe eight and 10,000 horses, you imagine how many of them are killed or wounded. And given the fact that it was easier to shoot at a horse and hit a horse than the man on it, especially if he's got armour on. So a lot of thousands of horses are dying and thousands are wounded. And there are stories of horses with shattered, shattered muzzles, with hobbling around with three legs, you know, absolute horror show. And so obviously a lot of these had to be destroyed. Cut down is the only thing to do. What they've done here, I think, is they've cut this pit. There's probably a ramp at one end. They've led them in one by one and they've shot them and they've just dropped. And we've actually got people on the team that, you know, the cavalry still exist in some form within our veteran community. And I had, I had um, uh, Sam tell me that this is exactly how a horse, skeleton, a horse body crumples when it's shot, it just drops straight down. And that's captured here. That moment is captured in skeletal form. And then we brought Gary in with the metal detector and we said, right, scan the trench. Every skull gave the signature of what we think is a musket ball. So they brought, brought them in one after the other, nose to tail, shot them in the head. That's what, that's what we're working on, but that story might change. We're, we're still cleaning them up. And so we've got, at the moment, four horses in a row in a pit specifically cut for their disposal and the disposal of human bodies. We've got at least one. It looks a complete skeleton. As the Waterloo Uncovered team race towards the halfway point of their excavation window, the clock is ticking to uncover the human remains as quickly but as delicately as possible. It's arduous work, with new team members jumping in to help scrape away millimetres of earth at a time, all the while uncovering more and more of the skeletal remains. But despite the excitement, the skeleton is posing more questions than it's answering. This is it, the truly remarkable find here at Waterloo Uncovered. We don't quite know how old this person is, we don't know what gender they are for sure, but this was Mont Saint Jean, this was the site of the battlefield hospital at Waterloo, so the chances are that this is, is a male body. We know a couple of things about it, if you look here you can see that the molars are fully developed, which means the person is at least over the age of 15, but they won't know the true age until they get down to the pelvis, if there is a pelvis. You look up here and you can see a leg bone that has just been shattered, so you've got a leg up by the head, 
and then you've got the arms coming round to the side. This is a, a truly either a, a, a gruesome injury or this is a pile of different body parts and bodies thrown into a pit after the, the true horror of what happened at the Battle of Waterloo and the injuries at Mont Saint Jean. Yet no matter who this is, what is astonishing, what is history making, is that this is only the second body ever found from the Battle of Waterloo. Only once the body is fully excavated will we get the chance to answer some of the questions being raised. But based on the other human finds in this trench, this person may have died on the operating table, then simply cast out into this ditch. I caught up with the co-founder, Charlie, one last time, who summed up the position that Waterloo Uncovered now find themselves. There's a lot to do here, and the real work will begin once these skeletons are lifted, um, and we can then approach the post-excavation, because that's the really clever stuff. That's where all the witchcraft happens, that allows you to see where they're from, um, the pathology, the health, and so on. So this is really exciting. Waterloo is remembered by many for its gigantic cavalry charges, acts of daring do and, and valour, and the, the fact that it was a great victory for Britain and its allies. But I think what this remarkable find really does is bring home the brutal reality of the fighting that took place on that dreadful day, the terrible cost of victory. This work is continuing, and you can be rest assured that History Hit will be there every step of the way as this story continues to unfold. Thanks for watching this video on the History Hit YouTube channel. You can subscribe right here to make sure you don't miss any of our great films that are coming out. Or if you are a true history fan, check out our special dedicated history channel, historyhit.tv. You're going to love it.